Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're going to wait a minute or two just for a, do we really have a, a hand raised? <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Jumping straight into things. Um, yeah, we had a, a, a really fantastic um, a number of RSVPs, clearly a subject matter today that uh, that is topical or interesting to a lot of people. Um, so our know, participant uh, ticker is, it still keeps ticking up. Uh, so really, really grateful and and thrilled to see so many of you taking some time out of your day to join us um what i i what i'm sure i, I know will be a will be an engaging conversation uh um yeah all right well i'm i'm going to kick it off we said 2 minutes but i think we were uh, we were waiting to see whether it was going to be a dribble but uh, clearly everyone is rushing through through the gates to 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 get in here um today we're going to be talking about uh well, the subject matter for our discussion is agencies need account leadership, not account management. And I'm not going to do too much exposition here or too much delving into what this is all about. Hopefully it's uh, enticing enough and, and, and possibly even self-explanatory enough, but if not, we'll, we'll cover it in the conversation. Um, I'm going to start with just uh, uh, running through some, uh, um, some housekeeping uh, for today. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, I, I hope that there will be uh, uh, some some robust questions and then hopefully some good answers. Um, so please do use the Q and A functionality to, uh, to to pose your questions. Uh, if there is an opportune moment during the conversation for us to to pick them up and to answer them, we'll do that. Otherwise, we're going to uh, keep some time at the end of the hour for uh, uh, for Q and A, and we'll try and cover them as best we can. And if we aren't able to, we can always pick them up separately. Uh, in a follow-up email, or you feel free to reach out to, to either Jillian or myself directly, um, and and you know we'll we'll do our best to answer your questions. Um, and uh, yes, uh, uh, yeah, and we'll also be sending our copies of the slides and a recording uh, of everything that happens today in a follow-up mail afterwards. So don't worry if you arrive late or if you have to duck out or if you miss anything. There's plenty of opportunity to catch up. Um, and if there's anything else that I've forgotten or anything else that crops up, I'm, I'm surrounded by our fantastic marketing team here at Red and Yellow, uh, Kat, Max, and Nick, who are sitting alongside me, uh, who will kick me under the table or prod me if I forget anything or if I, if I go off on tangents, they don't want me to. Um, but uh, I'm going to jump straight in with some introductions, the, uh, the boring one first. Uh, I think I just need to be assigned control over the slides. All right, Maxine is going to do the slides. We don't have too many, thankfully, so not too much driving. Um, so first up, I think, is just a, a, an introduction for me, which is the, the, the least interesting slide you'll see all day. Uh, my name is Andrew Allison. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer at, at Red and Yellow. Um, I've been with Red and Yellow for about 11 years now. Prior to this, I was the, the Chief Financial Officer and Chief Operating uh, Officer of a digital agency called Quirk. Uh, and, and so a lot of the my learnings from... From what we're going to be, or my experiences from what we're going to be discussing today are through the lens of, of account management uh, and, and its role within a, a digital agency. Uh, and obviously, subsequent to that, uh, my experience uh, at Red and Yellow, where we teach people how, hopefully, how to be great account managers, how to be great suits. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so I've got some of my own perspectives, but certainly none uh, that come close to, to those and, and, uh, of, of my, uh, my guest today, our guest today, Gillian Wrightford. Uh, who has uh, a wealth of experience, uh, not only personally, but um, as, as, a, as a suit herself in the past, but also yeah, through her illustrious career. I'll, a quick, I think the summary is there, but I'm, I'm going to read out a little bit more of it. Uh, her background is a mix of marketing, strategy, advertising, and leadership. She has a business science degree in marketing from UCT. She's worked in account management and, and strategy roles for various agencies uh, and has been a shareholder and managing director of two globally aligned agencies, Hercules, DMB and B and Low Bull. In 2007, she started Ad Therapy, a communications and management consultancy, works with marketers and, and uh, advertising communication agencies across the globe. She's also an educator um, and has uh, uh, builds capability in the marketing sector, but also lectures uh, at uh, public universities, most of the ad schools, including Red and Yellow, uh, and recently launched her own platform, the School of Thought. So go and check that out. We'll share details afterwards as well. It's an online knowledge sharing platform um, for the marketing advertising community. 
And so I think it's queries around the sound. Um, I'll carry on while, while the team looks at this. And, and Gillian also offers strategy consulting and, uh, and coaching and pitch advice. She's a widely sort of a public speaker, thought leader, consulted widely uh, as a, a communications industry and strategy expert in South Africa. So a lot there. Uh, I see people saying the sounds okay. So hopefully it's just isolated issues. So apologies if people are struggling. Hopefully the recording, if you are missing anything, uh, will will uh, will be good for you. Um, just to, to close out the intro, closer to home, Jillian is also the daughter-in-law of one of our founders at Red and Yellow, Bob Wrightford, who is a legendary suit in his own right. Um, and uh, uh, and and uh, we've been privileged enough to partner with uh, with Jillian in the development of one of our newest courses, a 13-week online course in account leadership, uh, which is very much aimed at bringing the science and magic back to the account management discipline. Um, we'll be touching base on elements after uh, the uh, of the of the course throughout the uh, uh, the chat we'll share uh, more information about the course afterwards if you are interested as well as some special discounts uh, and and opportunities for the for the upcoming course uh, there is another run in august um and uh, anything else that i've missed before i get into the subject matter i think that's probably it i still see there's some uh, backwards and forwards in the chats uh, just around audio quality. It seems like most people can see it. We apologize if there are some issues, but some will keep looking into it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think without further ado, Jillian, let's jump straight into the uh, kind of setting some context here. Um, I think what ex what exactly do you mean and what, is, what do you mean by account leadership? And, and why do you think now was a good time to, to, to bring a course like this to life? Thank you, Andrew, and hello, everybody. Um, so I think that for me, the term account management is not something, it's not a term I particularly like. Um, I like client service even less. Um, and I know that agencies around the world have experimented with different types of titles. So is it a brand leader? Is it a um, you know, they're all, all, all sorts of things, a project leader, project manager versus account manager. And for me, the big issue is that clients expect someone to be an advisor and not just a, an order taker. You're not just, you know, taking a brief and passing it on. Um, they, they're looking for someone with a degree of expertise and to, to guide them in what they need to be doing. Um, and I feel that the term account manager is too passive. I feel that it's it's um, it suggests that you're just sort of managing the process along the way. Um, and for me, at any level, no matter whether you're a junior account manager or a senior, there is a degree of leadership that you need. There's a, there's a leadership mindset that I think is important in the role um, to help grow your confidence and to help um, add value to the client in the way they expect you to add value. So, so I mean, if we if we take the the, the different terminology aside, I mean, I think mm. I, I share your your kind of thoughts on the, the term client service and uh, and uh, but account management, account leadership, client service. That you know, in many respects, they're the same name for the well, certainly account management, client client service, same different name for the same thing. Is there a textbook definition of what account management is? What would you expect a account manager to be able to do, and what would ordinarily be packaged up in that in that role? Well, I think one of the challenges is it is a, a, a very, very multifunctional role. And, um, you know, uh, there's a fabulous book called The Art of Client Service by Robert Solomon. And it's one of the one of the few books on client service uh, or account management I've, I've actually seen. Um, and he packages it up into, into three sort of main areas. He says you're responsible for the work, you're responsible for the relationship, um, and you're responsible for... Uh, in a way, managing conflict. I, I would add to that that you're also responsible for the profit on the business. You're responsible for managing budgets. So you have to be, you have to be strategic. You have to be good at relationships. You have to be good at people management. You have to be good at managing multifunctional teams. You have to be numerate. You have to be creative. Um, you, it, it's a, it's a right and left brain job. So it's, a, it's an extremely hard job. Um, and it's quite relentless and you're sort of in the middle and you 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 have to manage difficult conversations both 
in your client environment and in the agency environment. Um, but essentially, for the, the main job of account management is to make sure that your client's needs are met, uh, um, not, not, not necessarily their wants, but their needs are met and that the business on both sides achieves its objectives. Okay, all right. I think it's a, a nice kind of neat way of summing it up. I saw there was a, a query there and I'd actually made a mental note. Uh, the book that you mentioned, we are jotting down yeah, the, sure. uh, the yeah. names of them. So you don't have to keep track of them, but uh, I'm sure there'll be interest from many people uh, in, in just getting the details afterwards. So we'll share those uh, in, the, uh, in the summary afterwards. So if you've missed it, don't worry. We will send through, through details of any of the references and books that, that Gillian cites during the, uh, the, the course of the chat. Um, now, I think in, in, in my experience, the uh, you know, account managers, um, and they're often kind of at, at the very worst, they, they're the interface between, you know, well, they, they are, I mean, there's the function, they're the interface between the clients and, and the agency. And, and a lot of the role can very much be minimized to, to literally just trafficking backwards and forwards and, and playing to some extent, either a very good telephone or a broken telephone. Um, but a lot of the value is reduced from from what they do, and they, you know, I've, you know, and, and these are not terms that I'm coming up with myself. I've heard it from the suits that we work with, janitors, whipping boys or girls. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it not always a fun job. In fact, probably one of the most stressful uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and frustrating frustrating positions to be in because mm -hmm. um, everyone's ultimately angry with you uh, when when things don't things don't go well. But yeah. at, at the very best, to your point, all of those skills coming together make for an incredibly compelling skill set. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I suppose one of the challenges agencies and individuals who are you know, going through, who, who are excited about careers in, in, in account management or account leadership need to, to kind of focus on how do they harness, how do they equip themselves with all of those skills that, that they can add value, um, but, uh, uh, but also so that they don't become the... Uh, the admin, the order takers, and the uh, um, you know the janitors of the agency. To again, to use a term that is not my own, but um, but, but I, I have heard used before. Um, so I mean, I'm interested to, to understand. We've, we've got the concept of what a, 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 a account management includes. I mean, is there a are there certain key attributes that you would that you, you can extract and say this is this is what makes a, a really great or a really excellent account manager as opposed to what is what is good enough. I mean, I, yeah, you know, I wanted to add that as as much as it as it's a very difficult job, I think it's an incredibly exciting job, and I think it's a really satisfying job. Um, I think the attributes you need are you need to have an understanding of marketing. Um, you are dealing with marketing people, and and they expect you to 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 meet them on that level. So there has to be a degree of understanding of how marketing works. Um, there has to be a a, a, a knowledge set of the particular um, differentiator of your agency. So if, if you're a PR agency, you have to actually know what good PR is. And if you're an ad agency, you have to understand how creative works. So, so there's that sort of knowledge set. Um, and then there's a whole lot of soft skills. You know, there's selling skills. There's, um, there's, there's relationship skills. But there's also project management. And and I wanted to go back to the question you asked just now, um, Andrew, about what makes what make what makes this discussion so important right now. And I think the reason why it's so important is that over the years, what's happened to the role of account management is it's become watered down uh, because strategy has taken over um, a, a big component of the thinking part of the job. Um, not every agency has a strategist, and, we're, and that's why you know a, a account managers has have to be able to think strategically. But but there's a lot you'll hear a lot. Uh, let me just bounce that off strategy. Let me get strategy into the room. You know, it's kind of strategies taken out. A, component of the thinking um, that account managers should be doing. And then there's all sorts of other aspects where, um, especially with the, the advent of digital, project project management became sort of the the, the in thing rather than account management. Um, and it's part of account management. It's not the only thing that that is right. So I feel like the role is a little bit um a little bit lost. It's a little bit in limbo. It's stuck between these these things and it almost needs to regain its power and 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 be the leader of those things rather than just something in the middle that kind of, you know, processes stuff. Yeah, that's a, I mean, the, the, the subject of, of project management uh, was, was something we were wrestling with in a digital agency, I think possibly more so than in, in, 
in a lot of other agencies yeah. um certainly as it was certainly on the on the a cent and 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 it's it's far more i think uh, uh, predominant across the board these days um I uh, yeah I I actually parked the question for uh, for a little bit later but I think seeing as it's we might as well jump on it now and I think one of the things we will get to um, just for the benefit of of everyone on uh, on on the uh, uh, on the call is at the end we'll start to talk through some of the some of the proposed solutions and tips and things that you can do uh, as as things that agencies I think can do but also things that account managers can do and suits can do to take ownership of of how they. Uh, get out of this limbo and how they they kind of move themselves forward and reclaim their value and and mm -hmm. become account leaders. But uh, you know, I want to get back onto the subject of project management um, mm -hmm. and and where you see uh, the role of the project manager splitting out from that of the account manager. Are there certain is it is it a, a certain types of campaigns, certain types of projects, certain types of agencies where you would expect to see a dedicated project manager or at least a project manager get involved? Um, and then I suppose, what is the how do how what is the interface then between the project manager and 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 the account manager? Um, so I think you know one of the things that that we certainly saw was the tendency for the two to step on each other's toes, and yeah. for there to be confusion as to who then owns the communication with the client, um, and 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 there's a lot of room for dysfunction and miscommunication that starts to creep in there. Yeah, it's a it's a really good it's a really good um, question, and it's not one that I think uh, anyone's really got the definitive answer for. I think that in in my book, project management is far more important in the implementation phase, um, especially when there are lots of moving parts and 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 you coordinating, you know, with production and all sorts of things. Um, but I don't think it's something that that account management can wash their hands of. Ultimately, the buck stops with them. They have the relationship with the client and they've got to make sure that everything's on track. So in many instances, um, account manager is an, an account manager is also a project manager. So if you're lucky enough to have a separate project manager, then um, then the, that relationship has to be managed very, very closely and very tightly. And and I think it can be very, a very important one. Um, but it's not something the account manager can wash their hands of, um, because ultimately, as I say, they've got they are the response they are responsible for delivering, um, and and they're the ones that have to make sure that the timelines are being met and they have to manage that. Um, one of the agencies that I I know experimented with an interesting structure, which was not to have a traffic manager, but instead to have pods with um, an account manager, a project manager, and creative. And the project manager then took the role of, of traffic and managing production outputs, et cetera. And that actually worked extremely well. Um, and, I, you know, I think that that role between what is traffic's role, what is project management, what is production's role, it, it, is, it, is, it is something that needs a proper workflow analysis done. And, and it needs, everybody needs to, to work together. I heard a wonderful um, definition from um, a strategist that I worked with once, and she said, she said the whole sort of job of making advertising is 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 um, is rugby, not relay. And I thought it was such a great analogy because it's not that I hand over the baton to you and you run ahead. That thing might come back and forth, and it might go back there, and then we and it's teamwork getting it over the line. But it's the account manager's role to get it over the line. I think it's a re really good analogy. Uh, I like that. I'm going to stick with that. I think it, it's that's not just a certainly isn't a, a purely a. And I, I think something to to add to this is that this is not an agency specific problem. I think this goes for anyone yeah. who's working in an account management role in any uh, yeah. account managers exist in, in many different industries and in many different service sectors, uh, and that the problems are the same. Um, but obviously, we're talking about this, and I think it's particularly heightened uh, in the agency environment. But but yeah, mm -hmm. I, I I really like that idea of the the account manager retaining overall accountability for for the client relationship for 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 delivery. And certainly, you bring a project manager in, they will help, uh, and they can delegate the responsibility. And certainly, you can take over some of the more transactional. Uh, communications with the client, but uh, but the account manager needs to keep the finger on the pulse at all times, and is ultimately there to make sure that uh, uh, that everything happens, and the client is happy, and that the work is at the caliber that it needs to be, that it answers the brief, and and yeah. and ultimately, I suppose that the, that the account grows. Um, I mean, yeah, an, inter yeah. an interesting word you said there, Andrew. I just I just want to pick up on is transactional. Um, big 
it's one of the bugbears of, of, of clients that they feel that agencies in general have become too transactional um, and that they're not adding enough value. They're not proactive enough. They're not proactive enough. They're not understanding the business enough. And there's a lot that can be unpacked in that because oftentimes it's that there isn't enough money, <laughs> you know, that yep. the client has squeezed them and there aren't enough hours. So, you know, they're wanting something they're not prepared to pay for. But I think that's another kind of nuance on the account manager's role is to, is to yes, there's transactional activity that's got to take place. It's got to be delivered. It's got to be done on time. And that has to happen. That those are passport factors. But what comes on top of that? What else do you add, and and how else do you grow that relationship where where that that um, ability to share business challenges and actually, you know, get the agency involved um, in a in a proactive sense um, actually feels like a comfortable space because there's that trust. Yep. Uh, in interesting topic. There is obviously the, the tightening of budgets and and the the account management being squeezed into a into a line item that. The clients aren't always comfortable in they often question why am I paying for this? Why am I paying for mm -hmm. your somebody to manage the uh, the flow of the business? And that's where project management as both the account management become conflated. Uh, and I suppose for if you're an account manager and you're looking at that and you're trying to justify your own existence in the mix, you probably need to start asking questions about what value you're adding. Uh, I realize this is a much harder conversation for junior uh, account managers who are making their way through the ranks and you're holding court with the clients and for the more seniors, who feel more comfortable comfortable in the value that they're adding? Uh, it, it's those sorts of discussions are they're never easy, but they're, they're possibly easier to have. But I, I think that's probably something for every. I mean, it's something something for everyone to be to be mindful for. Certainly in the account management space, is to is to question when you you see your cost in the line. How am I adding value to this? Because clients don't want to pay for things to be shuffled backwards and forwards inside an agency. Yeah. They want to they want to know that they're getting value for every every rand that they spend. It's a very interesting um, point because I know that um, in the development of fees, for example, when you have a line item that says project management, it's generally far easier accepted by the clients. They understand that there is that role. What they don't see often is the role of that account management plays. And one one example is um, is the writing of an internal brief if there is an internal brief. Um, clients, when I, I run these creative fitness workshops with, with marketers and um, I explain to them what happens to your brief once it goes into the agency and then I show them what happens. And they're always quite shocked because they don't realize that there's this in-between part from when they receive the brief to when creative actually starts working on it. And they just think it's it's immediate. I've given you the brief, I've emailed it and you're working on it now, which of course doesn't happen. So I explain to them what actually happens internally and they don't see it. So they don't want to pay for it because they don't know it exists. And that's why I always think creative briefs, so if there are any internal briefs that are written, have to be signed off by the client. It's part of the strategic process. It's part of the creative process and they need to know it's happening. Otherwise, they're not going to pay for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um all right, I'm going to. I'm just conscious that we've we actually had we jumped straight into a, into a really good conversation. I, Maxine flagged me on the side that we do have some framing slides which we've ignored. <laughs> um, let's let's flick through one or two. Uh, don't worry that they literally are just to frame the conversation. No one's missing out on any any major insights or uh, or, uh, or, or or tips. Um, and uh, so I think we can uh, flick through to the next one, Max. Uh, we've jumped past straight through this. Um, I suppose the next question I wanted to ask, just getting get back to this, you know, what is account management? Is um, is what is the uh, what is the? Can you take us through the typical career path for what an account manager, what account management looks like? You start, you know, start off as an intern or a grad, start out as an as an account exec. What is what does your trajectory look like uh, through that uh, through through your uh, the, the the account management discipline, uh, and then tied to that. Um, and I'm, I'm interested to, to kind of understand uh, your thoughts on, on why historically uh, so many MDs and CEOs have come through the, the account management or client service track. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it, is it? Is it something about the learning that you get uh, through, through, that, uh, through that trajectory that better equips you to run an agency? Mm -hmm. uh, is it that the, 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 this particular discipline or, or career attracts people who are naturally more 
uh, inclined to to want or, or, or better equipped to, to to move into the management or leadership roles. It's not discounting that, that great managers and leaders come from other disciplines. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, that there's two questions there. And then the third part we can obviously pick up after that is: Do you see this changing? Uh, obviously, there's been a change in the in the value and the role of account management, uh, which is what we're discussing. But what impact does that have on on leadership of agencies going forward? And are we going to see any real shifts or, or changes as a result? So um, I'll start with the the sort of the career path first. So you will you will come in. You might even be a junior account manager uh, or an assistant account manager. You'll uh, then or an AE, and then you will become an account manager. Then you become an account director. Then you will become a business unit director or client service director, where you will usually have a number of account directors reporting into you and you will have a portfolio of clients. Um, And then you'll probably sit on some sort of management committee or management exco um, and be one of the sort of senior leaders of the business. Um, One thing that drives clients slightly crazy is, is that you might have a meeting where you'll have all five of them. So you'll have the business unit director, the account director, the account manager, the junior, the AE, the junior AE, and they'll all be in the same meeting, all taking the same notes. Um, (laughs) So, but the difficulty is obviously you want your juniors to come into meetings to be exposed to the clients, but you know, obviously you've got to, you've got to be judicious there. And the real split is that um, at kind of, at account director role, you start becoming responsible for budgeting. Um, so you start holding the client's budget and you start managing the, the 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 money side of the business. You start making sure that things are billed on time, et cetera. And obviously, as you progress into client service director or business unit director, that becomes almost the, the greatest focus of the business is the strategic conversations and strategic relationship with the senior clients. So you met, you you met meeting them at that level. Um, But then also managing the budgets and making sure that the business, your business, because I always say there's a there's a double profit imperative. There's your profit that you've got to deliver. And also you've got to deliver your client's growth. So very often what we tend to do is actually favor the client's growth aspects and forget about ours. But um, Mm -hmm. so so the main the main difference then is um, at a senior level is managing staff managing budgets and managing um, new business, new projects, uh, making sure that that whatever you've put in the budget for the business actually gets delivered. Um, so the reason why those people naturally then make good managing directors is because that's what a managing director is supposed to do. It's supposed to make sure that the, the budgets are actually on track and that you are delivering the the revenue and the margins that need to to happen and that you're creating a happy working space and that you've got good talent and you're growing people and that you've got good relationships with your with your clients um, and you're managing new business so I mean one of the key things that 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 has to happen and and it's it's a little bit of a challenge um, is that account management's got to learn how to sell and again, that's one of the areas we've kind of handed over to creative or strategy. Um, we've kind of let them do the, the bulk of the selling work and the bulk of the presentation work. Um, and we've sort of rendered their kind of management role in meetings just to be a facilitator. And that's why, you know, that leadership role, it is your project. You are leading the project and you must play a leadership role in, in those meetings. But that's why they do make good, good managing directors. Um, you know, you often find creative people are often the ones that actually want to start their own agency because they feel like they've, they've gone for far enough and then they'll look for a for a client um uh, a client managing partner so they don't really want to do that job they don't like it and they don't necessarily want to manage money either so they want to hand that over to somebody who's got that experience you do get strategists obviously that become uh, managing directors but the problem with strategists um is is that they don't have money responsibility uh, in their in their daily in their daily role, they they have the strategic responsibility and they're very clever, but they don't necessarily have from the account director onwards that responsibility for making sure that the the margins are there, reconning jobs, you know, managing the nuts and bolts of the business. So, I mean, the good news there for for all of the account managers on the on on the call is, you know, keep doing what you're doing, and you're in the right 
track for uh, you, you're going to learn some some hard knocks, but you're you're on the right track to to get into a senior position, and you're learning the right skills uh, to run an agency one day, assuming you you put a lot of the stuff that we're talking about into practice. And I think the crucial thing there is is taking ownership of your portfolio and your clients like your own business, treat them as a business, uh, because ultimately, I mean, what an agency is is a collection of portfolios, is a collection of of clients um, uh, that is ultimately you know, being at the moment, as we discussed, being run in many instances by 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 the most senior suit. So mm. so look at that as a as a progression as you go through your career uh, and start taking ownership as as early as possible. Um, uh, one of the one of the things I think that uh, I'm not sure whether we discussed it in an earlier point, but but it, it tweaked in my mind there is that concept of uh, of of who client service actually works for. They're working for the they're focusing on the client's growth and are they then uh, representing the client, which I know often they come back in, and in many cases they are. They're fighting for the client, uh, mm. whereas often that uh, you know getting back into the agency and there's a, often a lot of friction um, when, particularly when things get uh, um, become you know quite pressured or, or you're under under a lot of uh, deadline stress. Um, uh, so. So, so how do you manage that drift? How do you make sure, um, particularly as a young as a young suit coming up, how do you make sure that you continue to fight for, uh, do you continue to tread the line between uh, uh, looking after the growth and and the uh, the, the interests of the agency, uh, while still making sure that you are fighting for your client and and ensuring that you're 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 representing them and 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 uh, as as well as you possibly can. Yeah. Um... There is that, you know, that that idea that you 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 you're the bridge, and um, I also like to use the the kind of the the imagery of a of a bow tie, in that you you know at the center of the bow tie, you are dealing with the 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 person who is on your level um, in the in the client world, um, and there are all those um, relationships that have to be managed on both sides of the bow tie. Um, you know, your 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 counterpart is managing within the organization, managing up, managing whatever, and so too do you. Um, and there is a lot of friction. Um, I think the key with the friction is to make sure that it's always um that 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 it's always done in the name of the best work for uh the objective at hand. And I think, you know, I think sometimes agencies um, I think sometimes account managers defend the client too much. They become an internal client. Um, that's not the role. You are not the internal client. Um, and likewise, um, you know, so you you you've got to you've got to manage that conversation inter internally with your own team. Uh, and then you've also got to kind of manage the agency's point of view to the client. So it is a difficult one. Um, I think the the main thing, and this is this is why the whole premise of the course that we've developed um, with you is that it's it, you think like a managing director. You're thinking about the long term success of the relationship. Um, if you're just doing what's good for the agency, it's not sustainable. Um, you know, the client's gonna you're gonna get rumbled, and it's it's not gonna work. The work's not gonna work, and the client's not gonna love you, and that's gonna be the end of that. If you are simply an order taker for the client, it's also not sustainable because the work's not going to be right either. Um, so it is about having that independent and knowledgeable point of view that you can actually manage the flow and, and do what's right for the job at hand um, rather than sort of kowtowing to a client, for example, or kowtowing to a, a very dominant creative director. Absolutely. Well, I think I think one of the other things that's it's clear and I was actually thinking about it as you talk as you were talking just you know sitting in the center of that bow tie is is for 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 anyone who who spent any time in leadership um a lot of the job in many cases sometimes 80 percent of the job is managing conflict and managing mm -hmm. stakeholders with different interests and different agendas and uh, and nothing prepares you better for that than than being in a client facing role uh, mm -hmm. you have to balance both of those and that's yeah. also, you know, if you speak to speak to creators, speak to that's a lot of the job. So, in, in addition to the numbers dealing with a lot of the client facing stuff, a lot of them don't want to deal with the people management, and that's yeah. understandable because it is hard, it is not fun, and it is, it is a specific kind of person and a specific breed of person who who firstly has the resolve to do it, and secondly, who also who, who, who actually enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so if if you if you're looking to 
to get experience in in managing people, in managing conflict, in managing uncertainty uh, and and tension, then you know this is a a great career track to to get as much exposure to that as as uh, I suppose as you possibly can. Mm. Um, I want I wanted just to pick up on on a, the third part of the question that we were talking about earlier um, is just whether you see a change happening uh, with with the the kind of some of the core of, uh, historic value functions that that were embodied within the account management discipline with those being um you know possibly um moved across into other departments the rise of strategy project managers uh and in some cases the devaluation of account management as a discipline happening do you see this changing the uh, the makeup of, a, of of agency leadership over the next five to ten years maybe longer are we going to see a change are we going to see fewer suits progressing into the ceo md role or into other leadership positions um, do you see anyone stepping in to to take those, or or, or are we likely still to see uh, this this continue? You know, the interesting thing is, I mean, this is not definitely not just a South African issue. This is a global issue. So um, I think that it has already changed to a certain extent. I think the role of strategy has become much more dominant, um, and a lot of those senior client relationships sit more comfortably with the strategy side of things. Um, and I think that's my worry. I think that's why account management is, I mean, I actually had a thought the other day because I speak to a lot of people who are struggling with account management and I had a thought the other day and I was thinking, you know, if everybody's struggling with it, maybe we're doing it wrong. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe it needs a fundamental change. So I do think that, um, that you are seeing a devaluation in the, in the role um, because People are saying, okay, strategy is important, project management is important, um, and cre creative delivery is important. So, you know, can we do can can we do without them? I I went to a I went to a breakfast a few years ago, and there was a a, a guy from an agency in London who spoke, and he stood up. Uh, it was Mother, the agency, and he stood up and he said, "We don't have account management," and the and and people cheered. It was mostly a creative audience, and I was just like, "Oh, really?" Um, but what he and then he he, he went on and was a bit disingenuous because they just called them something else. Um, but the point <laughs> was like, who actually holds the relationship and who's responsible for the business growth? So, um, and. It, strategists don't like doing that part of the work. Project management's project, project management or kind of can, but not at a not at a proactive. Um, you know, they're not going to be proactive and develop relationships and de develop things on that level. Um, and you know, you, you can always have an a, a, an accountant that can manage the 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 money side of things. So I do think it's a challenge. I think that um, there might be a we might see a change, but. The role of account management is so valuable that it should yeah. we should just really strive to do it better and, and and then there will be a value that is assumed and is seen every day um, rather than at the moment as kind of what could we do without them because we've got project management. I've seen it happen. I've seen agencies where they've cut out that layer of account management completely and it's not good. It doesn't, it, it's something you lose something. I agree. I, th I think there's... The to that, that point, the transactional part, there are certainly elements of the account management function that can be taken over and probably done better by project managers. But there's that, mm. that growth engine. The Somebody yeah. has to be pushing. Somebody has to be looking for clients. Somebody has to be doing the business development. Somebody has to be responsible for bringing the money in uh, and for uh, for representing the agency outwards. So it's the uh, it is yeah. it is a it is a critical it is a strategically critical piece. It is the uh, you know without them you could have the best best creative, best product, best service around, but without an interface with clients, um, yeah, I mean, we really don't have a business. So, yeah. so I think it's, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I think it is it, to the extent that it's undervalued, it, it is a travesty and certainly is something that's that agencies and, and again, a call out to, to, to all of the, uh, the suits on the call is, you know, take ownership of this, take it to the, I, I realize it's easy to say that, um, and uh, so there is. I think there is a. Uh, there's a. There's a lot that can be done. Um, um, to I really mean, just, kind of, just, just another yeah. thing on that, and I remember. And again, it was this agency mother, um, a very interesting agency. They have. Um, they have one long table in their offices, and um, you have no assigned seat. So, 
um, because we creatures of habit, we always like to have the same seat and, you know, we want, but um, so they allow you to have the same seat for like maybe a couple of days or a week or so, and then you have to move. Um, so you land up sitting next to different people all the time. And one of the areas of feedback from, um, as I read an interview with them, was that creatives turned around and said they had new respect for account management because they were now sitting next to them and they were now listening to their conversations all day. And they had renewed respect for how hard it was and actually the types of conversations they have to have all day, every day with their clients. And the creative people turned around and said, actually, you know, we didn't realize how how hard they fight for us, um, you know, all day. So I think I think it is one of those things that um, there is so much value, but but because they're in the firing line all the time, sometimes it doesn't get seen. I like that idea of breaking down the silos as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is a, a, a classic kind of organizational issue that creeps in is is the departments start to sit together and so you start to, that, that dysfunction starts to creep in the mm. communication mm. starts to break down and people start to undervalue what what the uh, what their what their colleagues bring to the party um, i'm yeah. conscious of time we've got 20 yeah. minutes left um uh, i'm going to ask max to skip through to the not the, the the next slide and the slide after and we'll spend 10 minutes i think wrapping up on uh, on where to from here uh, mm. Next slide, Maxine. Um, uh, we've discussed the current state. So, so where do we go to from here? And some, Jillian, some of your your tips and suggestions for 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 agencies and for suits of what they can do to uh, to to practically change uh, and and take leadership, take ownership uh, of of uh, of of the, of account management and 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 their careers. Uh, just before we do that, um, I know there are a couple of questions in the Q&A. Mm. We will get to those at the end. We will make sure we keep some time for that. Uh, and, and if you have put, posted questions in the chat, please could you ask you just to move them across to the Q&A so that we can pick them up. Mm. Um, if there is anything that we don't get to, we'll try and pick up with you individually. But by all means, feel free to reach out. We'll have share contact details uh, in, in the follow-up email as well. So you're welcome to, to get in touch with us and, and we're happy to, to, we'll do our best to answer any, any, any remaining questions that don't get answered uh, today. All right, so uh, where to from here? So, I mean, the, one of the biggest things for me and, and that we, you know, we deal with it in the course is, is um, to be really well armed with, with knowledge. Um, so, so I think there's a degree of confidence that needs to come through um, in the, this leadership role, but you can't be confident without, without really being a bit of an expert in things. And I do feel that in some instances, um, there isn't enough knowledge um, in terms of, of really what, what does good look like? What, what does work in terms of creative? Are we a firm believer in the power of good creativity? Um, how do we get it? How do we drive it? Uh, how do we sell it? And how do we educate our clients on that? Um, but also, also understanding the there's a big education part role role in um, in the job because you've got to bring clients along in an area that is that is not their comfort zone at all. Um, so, so for me, the the real thing is arm yourself with knowledge. You know, I, I I always laugh because there's there's a code of advertising which is you know used to be the the a ASA ran it and it's now the ARB and in you know in all my sort of workshops that I do and I say who's read the code. And they all look at me sort of a little bit shyly and no one's read the code. Um, and there, we need to know the code. It's the literal rules of the game. Um, and I think we need to arm ourselves so that we get seen as an expert by our clients and by our creative teams and our product. We need to actually walk the talk and, and really build our knowledge in key areas in the business. Um, and, and then people will start appreciating the value because you will add value. You, you, you just, you will. So, um, so yeah, that's my thing is just, you know, really, really um, arm yourself and grow yourself in those areas that you need to be expert in um, and, and be very conscious and intentional of developing productive workflows. You know, um, I'm going to answer one of the questions here. It's, you know, are the lines of responsibility not blurred between the account management account manager and a digital content manager who also manages the account how can the two coexist that's a great question and i'll tell you why it's a great question because it sets up a 
bunch of frustration for the client if it's not managed properly. Um, one of the things that clients find incredibly difficult is when they're dealing with a lot of different people. And especially if there's an integrated account and you've got lots of different agencies and you've got lots of different account management, you've got lots of moving parts, it drives them bonkers. So as, as the account lead, you should manage that workflow absolutely perfectly you should work out roles and responsibilities so that there is no uh there is no conflict you both play a different role um who who has who who you might both be client facing but there has to be an internal agreement of how that looks and and agree it with your client say how would you like us to work together because we're both going to do se separate things but we don't want to kind of, you know, over overburden you, but work it out with your clients and be intentional about how you actually structure that workflow. If it was your own business, and that's why I teach the course with the premise of think like a managing director. If it was your own business, what would you do to make sure that that yeah. relationship was managed smoothly? Yeah, a couple of things I want to pick up. Firstly, just your, your point about the, uh, the ALB code. Uh, I mean, that's a is a bugbear of mine, uh, and and a little teaser here. We've uh, I think we've just reached, uh, we've just agreed with the ALB. Red and Yellow is going to to co-develop a course on the code and and responsible <laughs> and ethical advertising, which is very exciting. So watch the space for. I, I can't give anyone timelines. Literally, we uh, we we kind of reached agreement in the last week, but but for a long time, I thought this is something that's been missing. Uh, and uh, as a, a lawyer in a previous life, I've got a particular affinity for it. So. So, so yeah, watch this space. I, I, I would like to, 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 I would hope that every agency and every brand as well would, would, would put people on the course, make sure that, that the industry has a broader understanding of, of what responsible and, and ethical advertising looks like, because yeah. it is very poorly, I think, understood. And in some, some instances, it's very dangerous. So pharmaceutical advertising is a much higher standard of care that needs to go into, yeah. uh, into ordinary consumer advertising. But um, yeah. Yes. But I mean, I, you know, I always just say like, would you would you be Serena Williams without knowing how to play tennis? Like you would not. So no. this is literally the rule, the actual rules of the game. Um, and every single account manager should have those on speed dial because you can be held accountable if you if you if you muck it up. You know, if you if you in contravention of one of those things, the agency can be held financially responsible for any fallout. So, you know, that is like the basic, basic put that in your knowledge toolkit um, today um, because it's essential. Are there are there any basics you know, if you're a um, if you were going to say somebody who's come in, maybe you haven't got a uh, suits often not don't necessarily come with marketing background. Some of them come from, you know, from from with with, with and hopefully they've got some level of, of understanding of the industry they're coming into. But are there specific disciplines or specific areas that you would say advocate for anyone in the, these are kind of non-negotiables. These are certain things that, you know, you need to understand. Uh, you know, I mean, some some things I can think of the top of my head would be basic marketing strategy, uh, mm -hmm. understanding of, of of what marketing is and how it works. Certainly, mm -hmm. you know, from my context uh, or my history, the digital side, digital marketing, not necessarily being a specialist, although it certainly helps if you're a specialist or have a particular affinity for a particular discipline, but understanding the toolkit and the landscape. Mm -hmm. Um and, and then I suppose things like branding as well. Um, any other sorts of, uh, and to your point, you know, if you're in a digital agency, you might want to skew a little bit more digital. If you PR, yeah. you certainly need to understand those things. But are there any other kind of basics that you would recommend? Um, I mean, look, uh, all of those important positioning is extremely important. Um, and, you know, understanding brand building, um, reading, you know, reading the, the the research on the effectiveness because what we're selling really is effectiveness and growth and if we know what effectiveness looks like then we can sell it better um and we can motivate for it better we can explain to our clients why we want them to go in a certain way so really building up an armory of case studies successful uh re you know research that 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 shows you know how things work why they work and all of that and then a deep understanding of your specific um, specific area is important. I mean, Candace has asked in the participants if there are any deal breakers for this role. Uh, any, any attributes to say, if you don't have it, forget it. This will never be for you. I think you've got to be a people's person. You have to be diplomatic. You have to be a good writer. You have to be able to present well. You have to be um, reasonably good with numbers. I mean, it is, that's why I say it's a multifunctional role. 
But for me, the deal breaker would be someone who doesn't really understand the role that the agency is performing and who simply is there to uh, to make their client happy. We are not there to make clients happy. We are there to grow their business. So if it means we don't want to make them unhappy, but we may have to push back on them sometimes and we may have to have difficult conversations because we're trying to push things. We're trying to get better things out there. So you have to be quite a robust person and you have to be able to sort of take rejection, um, but also frame arguments well. Um, and, you know, when, when we say arguments and conflicts, they're not, they're not meant to be ugly things. They're meant to move things forward and to be able to do that. So you've got to be a, you've got to have quite a thick skin Um but an innate belief in that what you're doing works. Um, absolutely. I'm just looking at some of the questions. One, one, uh, just one quick hack I wanted to suggest to everyone here before we jump into some of the questions. I'm trying to think of ones which haven't answered or which might be a, uh, which might be a slight, slightly different to, uh, or, or take us yeah, into we, something new. We've got, a, we've got 10 minutes. We've got 10 minutes, uh, good one. 10 minutes left. Uh, you're just at the hack. Constant learning, a lot of free resources online. If you're interested, yep. you will go and find stuff. But yeah, a simple thing to everyone, follow Gillian on LinkedIn. Uh, she is a prolific poster of really, really interesting insights and, and content. Or go to you know, sign up to the School of Thought. Uh, newsletters generally are always good to get insights. But uh, yeah. but yeah, just expose yourself, bring them into your ecosystem, and you'll start to assimilate stuff and pick things up, and it will make you more valuable. Well, you'll, you'll become more knowledgeable. Uh, and it will make you a, be, a better, a better suit. I mean, that's I think is applicable to any career uh, and any discipline, but but certainly yeah. for this. Um, um, should we go through those questions, Andrew? Let's. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so the first one, you know, job specs usually want a person with a proven t track record of the relationships one has built. How do you prove that? Um, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, firstly, you can get referrals. You can you can actually get your client to write something about you. Uh, you can keep track of you know agent account managers should build their own portfolio. So creatives build their portfolio, but so too should account managers. So keep track. What was the brief? What did you do? Obviously, not every single job, but but you know good ones, things where you really made a difference, things where the client sent you an amazing email saying, "My word, this was the most ex extraordinary thing." Keep an example of the work that you did because you're part of that team that produced it. So build your portfolio exactly like creatives do. Build it, but build it with results as well. Build it with results and feedback from clients. Um, and I can, I can tell you something from a junior uh, account management perspective. Those people that you're working with now, you will grow up with. And soon, sooner or later, they will be in senior roles yep. and so will you. And some of my best friends today are people who were my clients when I was a junior. And you do form very, very nice relationships with them based on mutual trust and, and fun that you're having. Um, then I love Adam's, Adam's question, which is how do you deal with old men trying to add their historic input of advertising in a modern world? I often get a sense of ageism during my management of projects. Adam, I could spend an hour answering you. Um, and it is a fantastic question. So I think that um, there is a disconnect, uh, certainly, in, you know, the days of of, of the mad, mad men advertising, which I never watched because I couldn't bear it, um, to, you know, what works today. Uh, the only solution is to really become an expert in what really works, because there are some things from the historic uh, to the hi historic point of view that actually are being proved to be very effective right now. So listen, I would say uh, seek to understand, um, but then also be form your own point of view. Be Go and find the information and have, have a point of view that you can have a, a conversation with them about it. Um, uh, you know, if there is ageism, there, there's a lot of ageism in, in advertising just generally, um, both ways, uh, down to young people and up to older people. But I think that really the, the the point is to to be armed with facts and to to become a bit of an expert in that space. Um, what is the other one? In most agencies, our management seems to be last in line or less important to creatives. How can we emphasize the importance and key roles that we play? Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. You know, <clears throat> I worked, I ran an agency and one of my 
client service directors used to call the creative departments the royal game because they they could be royal game is um you know wildlife that cannot be hunted because it belongs to the king um <laughs> You used to call them royal game because, you know, they, they could do whatever they like and never get into trouble. Um, but the point is, is that they are a very important um, resource in the business and uh, we need to manage them. They are actually the factory uh, in a sense. And we need to make sure that our factory is running on all firing on all cylinders. Um, but account management has to prove prove their their um their importance and a big thing is developing really close relationships with your creatives with your uh digital strategists with your strategists so be a person that's interested go in there and talk to them about a new campaign what did you think of the pedro's ad go in and have a conversation and let them know that you are as interested in the business as they are and interested in doing really great work and you'll build a very good relationship with you and i promise you you will be indispensable to them and to the agency. Uh, we've got five minutes left. So I think we've still got probably time for one or two more um, mm -hmm. before we wrap. Uh, there really isn't much to, to add in closing. So let's take, should we take one or two more? Let's, um, uh, where are well, we? I'll, I'll, I'll that. answer this one about account manager in a bank, key account managers. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, you do get, it is a term in, in a lot of uh, B2B businesses where you'll have a, a key account manager. Um, and the role is slightly different, um, but not the, the principles of it are the same. Your job is to manage the relationship with that buyer. And this is the thing is that agencies are actually B2B businesses and yep. we don't always think of them as B2B businesses. So in a B2B business, if you're a key accounts lead or a key accounts manager, your job is to manage the relationship with pick and pay. And you just work with that buyer and you make sure that they're happy all the time. It's not that dissimilar in agencies um, and it's good to actually adopt the mindset that you are in a B2B business and that that is what you've got to do is manage the relationship with the buyer exa exactly exactly as they do with with key accounts managers. So so the you know understanding creative and all of that is is different. but like I would say for any account manager, you've got to have a deep a depth of knowledge of whatever it is that you're selling. So if you're a key accounts manager in a bank, you better understand that bank backward, backwards and why you actually are better than than the competitors. So um, what is this? Expectations as the account lead between marketing and um, This question is, how do you manage expectations as the account lead between marketing efforts and leads or sales? Um, I think I would answer that and say that ultimately as the account lead, you are still responsible. So there may be different people doing different things, but you need to pull that together and make sure that those things are actually delivered because, again, the back stops with you. Um, not just age, ageism, sexism too. Definitely a massive problem. Um, I could talk for an hour on that one question too. Um, and then as a junior marketer trying to move up the ranks, what are some of the best practices that can really add value and assist with career pro progression? Um, I would say build your profile, build your portfolio, keep a record of the things that you've done really well. Um, and then constant learning, constant learning, um, tap into mentors, work out the things that you're uncomfortable doing, or you feel that you don't have enough um, ability and then seek out mentorship. There's so much, as Andrew said, there's so much available on online in terms of of learning materials, but also in terms of mentorship that are very happy to spend an hour with you um, or within your own business, go and seek out mentors in your business and then go with, go to them with, I want to get better at this what, and, or ask them, say, you know, say, what do you think I need to get better at? And then, and then develop a plan for it. I think that brings us to, we've got a literally a minute and a half left, but thank you. I think we managed to get through more of the questions than I anticipated, Jillian. You're just kind of rattling straight through them uh, and, and in, in quick time. So hopefully everyone who asked a question felt that they, they got a, a good response. If not, by all means, send through a separate email. We'll pick up with you. Uh, we're going to be sending out a follow-up after this with a recording, a link to the blog post that Gillian wrote for us uh, recently, which uh, just unpacks some of the uh, the tips that she's discussed already in the in the session, but makes for easier reading on your phone or, uh, or, or, or when you've got time. 
Um, we'll send through the slides for the value that they've added, which probably isn't enormous, but uh, but if uh, we do find people like to see them, so we'll send those out as well. And we'll also send out a, just a brochure for the course if you're interested in doing the account leadership course on next run is, in, uh, is, is coming up uh, very soon. Um, and um, we'll also be including uh, some more information on discounts. So a voucher will be shared and, and some other, uh, keep an eye out for some other special uh, offers of value as it will include in there as well. So I'd, I'd like to just thank Julian again for a uh, for time, for her incredible insights uh, and and for, uh, for again, for, for your partnership on, on, the, on the course. And, uh, and thank you to everyone for joining us today. Pleasure. Thank you so much for, for having me. And um, yeah, we'll send out some information also on the School of Thought. We can put that into the into the email, but it's been a, a great, fun conversation. Thanks so much. Thank Have you. a great afternoon, everyone. Bye-bye.